Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and we're continuing this week's video series in Oahu, Hawaii. Last week, we took you 100 feet below the surface in a submarine, which was a really, really cool experience for us. This week, we do something a little different. It starts out somber and historical, and it ends with some fun. But the somber part of this is we take a trip to Pearl Harbor, to the USS Arizona Memorial. And what's interesting is several years back, I think it was five or six years ago, Deb and I were in Paris on one of these company trips. And the gentleman you see in this particular picture right here is a coworker of mine. And when we were in Paris, he was there with his dad. Deb and I were there together. We decided to go ahead and take a side trip one day. We took a train from Paris to Normandy. We hired a guide and we did a tour of the um, landing beaches of Normandy from World War II. So I thought it was only interesting and fitting that Jeff and I and Deb were back um, in Hawaii at Pearl Harbor for sort of a view of where the attack was that started in World War II in the Pacific Theater versus the European Theater, which we did in Normandy. So things kind of come full circle. It was good to share this experience with Jeff as well. Um, and yeah, that's a very odd sort of thing to take a tour on around the world, but uh, we've done it. As a matter of fact, we said to each other while we were there, the next thing we need to do is go see the World War II Museum together in New Orleans, which is a phenomenal museum. And we will have completed our sort of three phases of the um, Pacific, U.S., and European theaters of World War II. Hope you guys enjoy this week's video. This trip over to Pearl Harbor started like a lot of these company excursions and that was with a bus on our way over there. When we arrived we saw this actual museum and it just gives you a scope of what this was really like in the harbor itself. If you know the story here, uh, on that particular day the ships of the U.S. Uh, forces were parked in Pearl Harbor. They were on standby and they were attacked by Japanese planes. Interestingly enough, it was a Sunday and a lot of the crew were off the boats even. They were tied, kind of uh, side tied with one another. And you can see the layout of what the ships look like. And in this giant painting, as you walk into the museum, you can see what um, what the view might have been from the Japanese bombers that actually dropped the torpedoes. And they actually have a model of one of these planes up above and you can see the torpedo hanging right there. What's interesting is the Japanese designed these torpedoes to be dropped from airplanes, but in order to do so, they had to get to about 30 feet of height. And you can see here where the California and the Memphis and all the other ships were. So these planes came over the mountains, completely surprised the crews, dropped down to 30 feet, dropped the torpedoes, which would go into the water and then sink down and come back up um, to about a 20 foot depth, 10 to 20 feet below the surface. And that's where they would make contact with the ships and as you know from that fateful day in history they did tremendous damage at Pearl Harbor. Radar was a bit of a new thing at this day and age and there were a couple of radio operators on Oahu that actually marked these particular aircraft uh, as they had an approach coming in. They reached out to their superiors to say hey, we have these identified targets or unidentified targets on radar um, coming toward Oahu. And because the U.S. had been expecting some resupplies from the U.S., they assumed it were U.S. Sh uh, planes coming in, and they actually told them not to worry about it. So very interesting that had that had a different course of action based on that um, notification around targets coming in via radar. Who knows what could have happened at Pearl Harbor? They have a recovered torpedo on display there in the museum, and it's just pretty shocking just how demolished this is, and yet you could still see some of the insides and whatnot. Pretty crazy the way these things uh, kind of land in the water and make their way over. Next, it was time to make our way out to the USS Arizona Memorial, which you see on the right-hand side of the screen there. So it was raining and we waited it for a little while under a cover before we boarded a Navy vessel. And the interesting thing is you have to keep in mind, you're actually on an active Navy base during this. So for this particular portion of the time, we were the position of the uh, US Navy. As we made our way by boat over to the actual memorial, we passed several of the ships there in the harbor. So aircraft carriers, supply ships, uh, and what was really neat is as we made this trip over, you start to get an understanding of the battleship era, right? That was the big bad boy of the U.S. Navy, and that was how wars were won or lost. But I think Pearl Harbor changed a lot of that. It really sort of showed that 
airplanes uh, and aircraft carriers were going to be the key to future successes in warfare. So definitely interesting to see the battleships and a bit of a relic at this point now. So as we made our way by boat to the actual loading area of the USS Arizona, you can see the actual entranceway to the memorial itself. This is a very somber place, and when you think about the number of people that died here at this particular site, it really is a very interesting and quiet walkthrough as you go through this memorial. I didn't take a ton of pictures, but I did want to show you once you're on the memorial itself, you can see where the USS Arizona was tied up, and that is the ship that is sunk in this particular location where this memorial is. From the memorial itself, it was a windy day, so it was a little bit cloudy, the water, but you could see toward the bow side of the ship, this is where you, I'm sorry, toward the stern side of the ship, this is where you would see some of the metal sticking up right below, above the surface. And then out the other side of the memorial, you could see the uh, one of the old gun turrets that were on the battleship itself and also a column where people used to go up and down into and out of the ship. Uh, it's amazing to see it sitting like this uh, still all these years later. The USS Arizona is actually considered a military tomb. And for anybody that was aboard that ship and that died that day, most of their bodies sunk with the ship and that is their tomb. For people that have survived that particular attack and then later passed away, those particular folks had the ability to be buried back into the ship. And this photograph right here shows you uh, divers that actually have a tomb with, with the remains of a, of a sailor that was survived that particular uh, attack. And then they dive down, they weld that to the inside of the hull. Um, what's interesting is there are only two remaining survivors from that actual attack. The third, the uh, third from the last survivor, did want to be entombed in it. And a couple of months ago, they actually buried that particular tomb down inside the ship, welded it to the side of the hull. The remaining two that are still alive have said publicly that they don't want to go back to the Arizona. So we may have seen the end of an era. The last survivor from that particular uh, attack that wanted to uh, be entombed in the ship itself. So it's very interesting. Uh, this photograph shows how they go about doing that. But this is a solemn place, a very solemn place. As a matter of fact, um, interestingly enough, the ship had just taken on about 1,100 gallons of diesel uh, a couple of days prior to the attack, and they were planning on leaving out a few days after that. That ship, when it sunk, still had all that oil aboard, and they don't want to do any kind of recovery to it because it is an active tomb. And oil slowly seeps out of this particular uh, vessel. And, you know, I have some footage here where you can see the oil, like a little drop will come up to the surface and spread out across the surface. It is amazingly um, somber or solemn, if you will. They say that those oil droplets that come out of the Arizona and have since that attack um, are the tears of the survivors. Very interesting that they, uh, they sort of say that, right? The tears of the Arizona. Uh, and they flow out 24 hours a day. As I mentioned, this really is a solemn place, and I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a glimpse of the USS Arizona and the Pearl Harbor Memorial. Uh, I hope it wasn't too much of a downer for a video, uh, but it's certainly part of our, our country's history. And frankly, it's an interesting look when you go back and you consider what that really meant to warfare in general and how the U.S. responded to J uh, Japan at, at the uh, offset of this. So. Anyway, I hope you did enjoy that portion of it, but we don't, certainly don't want to end on a, a sad or solemn note. Deb and I continued our trip in Oahu. We then went back to Kualaua Ranch. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, I showed you footage of a tour. We did a movie tour in what they called Jurassic Valley. We had such a good time there on the movie tour. Deb and I decided we want to do something a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more fun. So we took a tour on UTVs, basically a four-wheelers. Um, through the mountains in that Jurassic Valley in Kualaua Ranch. It was a two-hour tour. I have some footage here. I'll show you some of it. I'll do a little bit of a narration and a voiceover because it was a little bit challenging for two reasons to film. Um, one, you can't, you're not allowed to film when you're driving, so Deb was able to do some of the filming. Um, but the other thing is it 
poured. And you'd think that would be a bummer, but listen, if you're going to go ride in four wheelers or you four wheel drive vehicles in a, a mountainous terrain, right? You want the fun. So we had a blast. We wore ponchos and, you know, goggles and helmets, and we just had a absolute ball. So I'll take you on through a little bit of this and hope you guys enjoy it as well. After getting our helmets fitted and ponchos, we were set in our four wheeler or UTV and off we went. We followed a guide. There were five of us UTVs with the guide. Um, so it was a nice small group. And as I mentioned before, it rained and you can see uh, it rained on and off throughout this day. And it started with just sort of a lovely ride. Uh, in and around the trees. Um, what's really cool is the scenery is just phenomenal. Now, this happens to be the same ranch where we did the movie tour, but we were only on um, the same sort of views from that tour, maybe 10 or 15 minutes of the uh, of this two hour trip. Um, so it was really cool to see things from a different viewpoint. And I just went ahead and sped this up. You get an idea. Some of the trails were pretty smooth, more like dirt roads, uh, but you know, we'd buzz around and follow our guide and uh, you know, she would stop from time to time and, and give us some information. But most of the part, we would just ride along behind her and you can really get a sense for um, you know how steep some of the hills were. Uh, forgive the footage, it's a little bit wobbly. Deb was using our sort of big camera and trying to do this through a DSLR without a tripod on a bumpy vehicle. Um, but, you know, the things wound down. We actually caught up to another group that's in, right there in front of our guide. And then from time to time, we would stop and she would give us some information about the particular is, uh, area or the history. Um, she talked about how this land was founded. Um, and, you know, it was visited quite a bit by uh, Christian missionaries who were trying to bring uh, Christianity to the islands and help educate the, uh, the Hawaiian people at the time. Or, you know, so they thought they needed the education. Uh, but it really was cool to get some of this history. And, you know, if it wasn't raining, she would just sort of stop the uh, stop her four wheeler. We would all stop and hop on out of them. She'd gather us in a certain area and share some of the information. And just like our tour guide on the movie tour, she was unbelievably knowledgeable. Um, you know, definitely a local Hawaiian, spoke with a good thick Hawaiian um, a, a lingo and accent, and just a really, really nice person in general. So we continued our four-wheeling trip. Um, and again, I thought I'd just take you along. It's going to do it right through fast motion, but you can just get a sense of how beautiful the views were. And even this one section on the uh, overlooking of the hill where the military bunker was, we saw this on the movie tour, but to do this on four-wheelers where you just ride from a valley, all of a sudden you're on the top of a mountain, you know, I don't know, 500, 1,000 feet off the surface of the water. And then you kind of go back down the other side and into the valley again. It was just gorgeous. It really was. Um, and it really, it, it, was, it was a fun time. And I, I didn't film a whole lot of it while it was raining for obvious reasons. Didn't want to have the camera out. But just to give you a sense of this, take a look at the views that are around you. And, and I, this doesn't do it justice and capture just how lush and green all of this area really was. As we went through the different sections of the park, every once in a while we would pass another tour vehicle or something. Um, and I mentioned this in the video a couple of weeks ago, this is an active working ranch. So there were places where we would have to go through a gate and you could see the guide kind of got in front of us. We followed right up behind her to, to kind of, you know, box out the, the cows, if you will. And she'd open the gate and you can see the other, the other UTVs coming out from behind us. Um, you know, this this is our group of five, if you will, getting through the gate. So we got to enjoy quite a few sights and then we did a little bit of this river crossing too and this was a blast. Our guide then took us to an area where they are getting ready to film Jurassic World. I think it's the third or fourth or fifth in the series. Heck, I don't know. But we pulled around this little area. Um, we all stopped and we walked across this little pasture if you know, on the left. And it was it was pretty muddy. But, um, but while we were over there, she took some pretty cool photographs of us uh, with a fake dinosaur.
was a lot of fun. Um, and as we got the pictures done with everybody, she said, come on, let's get back to the bikes. It looks like it's about to rain. And when I say rain, I mean pour. Look at that rain coming across in sheets across the valley. If you look above the bushes toward the mountains, you can literally see how it's just sheets moving across it. Uh, I thought this was pretty interesting. I'll uh, just let this go for a minute and let you see just how wet it was as we first took off. Now we had a roof, not that it did a whole lot, but that poor woman was really wet. Frankly, it was nice. It was kind of cool to um, just have a change of pace, a little bit of cloud, a little bit of sun, a little bit of rain. Uh, we continued through our trail ride. Uh, and just, I, you know, again, the sights are gorgeous. If you're ever in Oahu, I would recommend you take a trip to Kualaua Ranch. The UTV trips were really fun. I might enjoy a four-wheeler too, um, just because that way everybody gets a riding experience. Deb was sort of passengering on this one. Um, but yeah, it was a really good time. We kind of uh, wrapped this up. So some hour and 45 minutes or so into the tour, we were starting to come back to the paths that join the regular roads where the, um, you know, where the tour of buses actually go. I can remember as we took that tour a few days ago uh, on a bus in the movie tour, we actually came right down this path that we're merging onto here. And it was right there along uh, some sort of wild pig farms and whatnot. As a matter of fact, there were some pigs right there on the side of the road. But we had a blast. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this week's video with a glimpse of Pearl Harbor and finishing up riding four wheelers at Kualaua Ranch in the uh, southern part of Oahu. This has been a really fun series for us to do. It was all about our trip to Hawaii and some of the things we did there. In upcoming weeks, we're going to have quite a few additional videos. We're going to take you to Vegas for a quick trip. And also, I think I'm going to start a series on a new um, combination pellet grill and gas grill that we decided to get here for the house. I know it seems like an odd thing, but it's a brand new offering from this particular company. It's only been out a couple of weeks. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and, and pick one up because I like the features it has. Really don't know yet how it will hold up long lasting. You know, anytime you get a new model of something, you always wonder that. But when I looked online, I found nothing about it. And just like when we were doing our sailboat refit videos, we started that channel seven or eight years ago primarily because when we looked for something online on how to do something and we couldn't find it, we would record it. Uh, and that has been a really fun sort of adventure for us. We enjoy the videoing, we enjoy doing the editing and posting the videos. So this is going to be something we'll do a few of. I don't know if I'll actually put them up on our regular channel as, as a post like for part of our weekly updates, or we'll do it sort of separately, if you will. But anyway, those will be coming up as well. Thanks, everybody. Safe sailing and a good following sea. We'll talk to you soon. And don't forget, in just a few more weeks, we will be sailing Dream Chaser back across the Gulf of Mexico to bring here. So we'll be back doing some good sailing as well. So adventures abound for us and the family. Bye, y'all.